Hello, and welcome to a very special 8-minute demo video series. Today, we're going through a video tutorial on OIS 6.3 Advanced Workflow Design and Best Practice Video Shorts. Yep, these are going to be smaller videos on specific topics. And the topic we're going to talk about right now is error handling. Okay, let's take a closer look at error handling. This topic has been covered previously in the standard OIS logging topic, which is also available in this best practice collection uh, if you're going from the blog post. Um, and essentially it's handling the possible errors from various objects within a workflow. So this object is performing some action and there can be various results from the execution of that object. So it could be successful, produce a warning or a failure. Now each one of these statuses is determined by you because you determine what a success means, you determine what a warning means, and you determine what a failure means. And you could have more than just those statuses. So it's going to be up to you based on your process what you want to define as success, warning, and failure. Error handling is just the umbrella for the ability to handle that within the workflow. And you can see we handle it very easily by just having different links come out of various objects. So if you want more detail on specific use case with error handling, how to log those errors, you can watch the standard OIS logging that's also available in video and documentation for the IP and everything. But for now, we're just going to do some error handling based on uh, just a couple simple examples and following some simple rules for error handling. Okay, so one of the first rules is create error handles for every important object. So you have to determine what's important and what's not. And for this example, the run program object is going to be important, while the custom start object is not so important and even the logging object that we're going to output to is not that important. So in a normal case we're just going to create a very simple workflow has a custom start run program does something and output some data. This could be you know representing email, it could re represent a ticketing system, doesn't really matter. But best case scenario this object will run, this object will run, this object will run all successfully and each one will go down the line. As we talked about in the complex link logic topic, by default, every link between an object, by default, is just success only. We also mentioned in there it's not the best practice to just leave those success only unless you know for a fact that's going to be successful every single time. Now, there's no way to know for a fact that every object is going to execute every single time, so it's the best practice to actually never leave a success only link, period. Now that sounds like a lot of work, but for, for production instances you want to make sure that the links do not just contain success, and even if that's warning and failed, so you know that data will be passing through here regardless, and then you can deal with that in the other objects. Now it's very not very often you're going to have just success warning and fail because that would mean the next object would need to be able to handle all three of those um, cases. In most cases you're going to have different links coming off the different objects. For this though, obviously if it's successful we want to attempt to run the program. But if this was an important object and we wanted to track whether it was successful or failed or not, we would go to a uh, fail routine, which you can do by triggering a workflow, you can do by you know setting a, a an event. So in the case, because we don't want to leave any success only links, we're going to do a warning failed link. We're going to make it red, and we're going to change it uh, change the link to error. Whatever you want to do, we can name this initiation failed. And then in here we can make it, you know, error, and then whatever the error message is by going to common publish data and choosing error summary text. In fact, I'm going to put that in the details. In the summary, the object name, and then the object status. All right. So we've handled any errors coming out of the custom start object. Not many can happen, but uh, we've handled that. Now, with the success link, we'll make that green, 
change it to success. Before we do the run program object, we're probably going to want some parameters from the custom start object. So let's go ahead and add our standard for this kind of example. Command, working folder or directory, what do you want to name it? Then in the run program object, command execution, we're going to just grab that published data, our computer, command, and folder. Alrighty. Now, for here, if it's successful, sure, we can move forward. So we can even change this to success. And in the options, we'll change this to green. And for the include statements, we're successful here. But success for a run program is not always success. That just means the object was successful. So for this particular object, we might want to tra track program exit code equals zero. We know then the command was a success as well. Now that's fine and dandy, but what happens if it fails? So again, we're going to want to copy that logic and maybe call this, you know, execution failed. And we can still use object name. So I'm just going to reassociate an object status. And for the error summary text, we just reassociate. And maybe even concatenate the peer output. Maybe we'll see. That'll capture some of the errors as well. Of course, we got to change the link, and we would want to change this to warning or fail. And of course, or program exit code does not equal zero. And we'll make it red just to be consistent. All right. Now, for this simple workflow, we're taking in data from parameters. If that's successful, and it should be, we're going to run a program or command. If that's successful, we're going to output to some platform event like we normally do. So this is going to be information. We can use similar to here. So I'm just going to copy this and paste it to save second, valuable seconds. And then in here, we'll just put pure output. All right. Now, as you know, if I check this in and run it, it will fail on this object. So that's a good test, though, to send this event down here. Now, I've cleared out the events, so we can uh, start fresh. So we're going to go ahead and check this in and run it. And we're going to see if we get our error handling on the custom start object. And we did. You can see the custom start produced a warning. Unfortunately, there was no error summary text. But if there was, it would have been passed to the event which produced an error that says that it produced a warning. Now we could do that separately. We could have broken out warning into warning and failed into failed. For that level of importance of an object, it's not critical. But let's take a look at if that passes, and we'll pass data to the run program. All right, so we're going to pass some data in here. Step over. Command's just going to be a simple dir. And working folder, see colon backslash demo and computer localhost. This time going to be able to it's going to be successful and it's going to report and you can see up here in the scrunched window it's going to be just fine. Now, let's make that command be correct and even give it a good working folder. But the computer, I'll just put something that is not in my domain. <laughs> you can rest assured that it's not in my domain. So we'll see that the run program object will fail and it'll go down this path and then the error is handled because we're capturing it. There's run program status has failed, could not access this computer obviously, and then there was no peer output. So if we check the status of the run program object, there is no peer output because of the failure of the object itself. Now, alternatively, instead of having the object fail, let's have the command fail. So command is going to be dirt. Uh, working folder C colon backslash demo doesn't really matter. And computer is going to be localhost. Now there is no command dirt in my path. So it should fail on that command and we'll get a different error. And you could see that, that although the object was successful, because we're capturing the program exit code, which was not zero, if we take a look, program Mexicode was one, we then will be writing error. Dirt is not recognized as an internal command. 
So this one error handling link handles both if the object fails or the command within that object fails. And due to the complex link logic that I didn't account for, because I am looking for success here, it went down that path as well. So that's something you want to keep in mind. I would love to say that I did that on purpose, but I had forgotten. So what I would want to do here is remove this success and only go based on the program execute, which if it does produce a program execute of zero, that means that the object was successful, that they're dependent. If the object fails, then program execute doesn't actually exist. So we could test that now. All right, step over. We're going to do dirt again, backslash demo. Next, next. It did fail as expected, and it will not go down that path. Now, if we give it something successful, obviously, like dir on c colon backslash demo on localhost, next, next, it will not go down the fail path. It will go down the success path because it had a program execute of zero. And there you have it. So. Another good reminder for uh, link logic, complex or not, is traverse every link and make sure you know what's going to happen in every case that you could possibly fathom before you obviously put anything into production. This is just a simple example with three objects, initialize object with data, a execute something, and an output. Whatever these are for you, they may not be these three objects, you want to first identify what's the most important object and can we continue if that object fails obviously we cannot continue if this object fails we cannot continue if this object fails so we want to log that information and then on the success paths make sure it's only going to go on success by your definition of success and remember every one of these links was configured in some way and even though I left this one success only I do have the option to capture if it warning or failed. Now if I wanted to be extra thorough, I can put, because I know if the computer is empty, it will fail as well. So I could do equals, let's change that to does not match pattern caret dollar, which means it's a null check. So now I'm really thorough. This is going to capture data. It's going to continue only if the computer field is not null, and then it'll try, attempt to run the command, and then it's successful. It moves on. If it if it errors at either the first or second object, it'll it'll fail out. And obviously, if this wasn't a send platform event, maybe it was a create a ticket, you'd want to uh, fail out on that as well. And remember, test every single link for success, warning, or failure based on the criteria in your test plan. So the next best practice I want to show you with error handling is actually creating an error handling subroutine that will take in all various types of errors from various different objects. So I'm going to create a new policy. I'm going to just name it error handler. And what it's going to do, it's going to take in a custom start object, and then maybe it'll uh, attach it to an email or something like that. Or it can be, you know, attached to a send platform event or create a ticket and a ticketing system. So you have obviously different options that you want to go down, and I'll bake that in. So this would be notification type or send platform, and then summary. I'll keep this simple and details. This way, we can call this workflow every time. Instead of having to create one of these objects every time, we trigger a workflow and we can have various options based on what we want to do. So obviously we need to filter on type here. Notification type equals SM for service manager. So we know what we're doing. Blue. This one will be email. A different blue really doesn't matter. And here, I'll leave that black for this demonstration. So I'm just going to show you here if we would do error or warning. You could just add more objects as you need. And you could say what level of error it is. It could be error, warning, or a specific status based on what you need. 
and we're just going to take summary and details that would fill it in. Now for these other objects, I'll just quickly fill this one out. And then for description and title, we could fill in this right. <laughs> title will be summary and description will be details. I won't be running any through that option, but you get the idea. And then for send email, you could put in, you can manipulate this whatever way you want. And you can send an email. You could do both, or you could do many different things. It depends on what you want to do. Either way, we can check this in. And now we can replace these objects with trigger objects. So to save the link details, we're going to go ahead and detach the air handler. And we get notification type for this. I'm going to do event. And then we're just going to pass in, in the summary, I'm actually going to copy and paste from this guy. And uh, in the details, we'll do our summary text. All right. And we could even copy that name, delete this guy, rename that. And you get the idea. We'll do this one more. And actually, I should have just copied and pasted that other object. It's all right. Notification type event summary text. Expand this out. And then peer output, just in case it has any information. All right. We do not have to wait for completion for these because it's you know if it goes on this path, it's ending. All right, now if we check this in and run through the operator console, if I start this up with dirt and working folder doesn't matter and localhost, it will go down the trigger policy here that I forgot to rename and uh, we'll go to the air handler. We can see in the events. Run program status is success, and we get the error that we expected. If we look at the log history, you can see here that it came through the custom start and went to the send platform event. Not that I have logging turned on for that anyway. So it went down this path based on the data that we had in this sending through here. So that's that. I mean, other than you know cleaning this up a bit. We have a completed policy with error handling, and we've done, followed the best practice of creating some sort of error handler that can take in multiple different types of requests for errors or notifications. We can go from there, and you can just build on this as needed and then reference that in any of your other policies. And as you fail out from different important objects, you call that, pass in the appropriate data, and you're good to go. But like I said, if you want a more detailed example of um, error handling and how to log data in a different way than possibly using these three methods, you can go ahead and watch the standard OIS logging video or take a look at the documentation for that integration pack. We certainly appreciate you watching. Thank you.